Hi, my name is Jake from Biodio Aquariums. We're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we're here to talk about some clams. Uh, so here at Biota, we aquaculture and captive breed everything. We believe in uh, captive bred uh, fish, corals, clams, everything as possible. Um, so we breed specifically Crocea maxima dorasa at the moment. Uh, in the future, we're going to have some Tridacta noe, the teardrop maxima, and some Gigas, hopefully. Um, I'm here to talk about how easy the clams are to take care of and uh, some good parameters to keep them at and what, how they benefit your aquarium. So when you're choosing a clam, uh, the first thing to look for is obviously uh, something you're going to want to see in your tank. So you want a coloration, a pattern that you're going to see for hopefully a really long time because um, clams can live up to 20 years. Um, so that's a really long lifespan for an animal that you're going to see every single day. So you want something gorgeous that's going to be a kind of a showstopper in your tank and you're not going to get tired of. Um, the second thing is to look for the health. Um, the biggest thing is around the mantle, you want to see there's no curling. Um, curling around the mantle can signify some pests on the clam like a protozoan or even uh, like a pyramidella snail. Um, you also want to check out the foot of the clam. Um, if the foot is still intact, um, that's really important because that also signifies a really healthy clam. It was either harvested correctly or it was captive bred and it was handled correctly along the way. Um, they usually drop their foot if mishandled or if the parameters go out of whack, uh, they can just fall right off the clam. So obviously you want to keep uh, good parameters same with uh, your corals and your fish, so lower nitrates, lower phosphates. Um, I wouldn't really put a specific number on it, um, but you can always gauge um, the health of your clam and the health of your corals for what your, cor what your tank may need more or less of, being nitrates or phosphates or alkalinity. But consistency is really the key. Um, you don't really want to have swings anywhere, um, especially in alkalinity and calcium, because that could really be detrimental for a clam. Usually they can come back from some stressors like that, but sometimes they can be far too gone. It's great to consider a clam in your aquarium because it really kind of ties the whole wild aspect or the, what you want to see in an aquarium. Um, you see the corals, you see the fish, and then a nice clam really shows a real reef. Um, on top of that, they polish the water, they help uh, suck up some nitrates, phosphates, and they grow with the calcium. So it really clears up the water so that uh, when you're looking in your aquarium, you can see everything a lot better and even make, some, uh, make it easier for you to grow your corals. Uh, so all clams don't really need to be fed at a certain size. Usually when they're smaller, uh, it's nice to feed them some additional phytoplankton every few days just so they can grow and be healthier, keep that coloration and maintain that health. Um, usually if a clam is over about two, three inches, it can get most of its food from uh, just filtering what's normally in your water column and uh, from the light, obviously. Um, we here, we dose um, some uh, frozen and refrigerated phytoplankton um, just to help keep the coloration and maintain the health of our clams, especially at these densities because they're all cleaning the water so often that there's not, they're really kind of stripping everything out. Um, but it's always nice to maybe every month, every couple of weeks, to just feed your tank with a little bit of phytoplankton. It helps out your corals, it helps out your microfauna, um, and it really kind of just helps out the clam in general. Um, it's always be careful uh, what kind of tank mates you put with your clams. Uh, obviously you don't want any kind of uh, whelk, sometimes cowries, because they can eat the clam. Um, but you want to watch out for some fish. A lot of the angelfish will pick at them, stress them out, and that'll keep them closed up. Um, which they might struggle getting food at that point. Um, I know a lot of dwarf angels, even our captive bred coral beauties, um, having never seen, an seen a clam before, they can also pick at uh, clams. Uh, some rabbit fish sometimes do it. And even you get the occasional tang every once in a while that s wants some of that zoosanthelia in, in the mantle. So you do want uh, to keep your tank parameters uh, lighting really, really high. Um, they do like high lighting, they like to be Doraces like to be down at the sand bed, while Maximas and Crocias like to be a little bit higher in the rock. They kind of uh, like that harder substrate. Uh, they do well with that. You do want to keep uh, a nice par level 
Um, I wouldn't put a number on it. Obviously, you, you wanna move your clam around to see where it's the happiest and it will move itself. Just kind of gauge the how open your clam is and uh, how it's looking to see if it's really happy in that spot. If you need more or less light, it's always best to move the clam around maybe every few days when you first get it just to make sure it's uh, happy in your aquarium. Some people consider burping clam necessary. Um, I wouldn't. Um, I've taken clams in and out of water pretty often, um, either showing it to people or uh, just moving them around, cleaning them even. We scrub the clams here at Biota every couple of days just to make sure there's no buildup algae. Um, and always uh, put them in, back in the aquarium without having to burp them. Uh, if they're a healthy clam and doing really, really well, then the air should release um, on its own or it'll force itself out with its own muscle, muscle and tissue. Um, but if the clam is struggling and it's not opening or closing on its own, uh, it might be necessary to burp it just so there isn't that air trapped and it isn't struggling to keep closed or open at that time. Obviously you kind of have to rock it back and forth, maybe give it some light pumps um, just if, if it is really trapped in there. But there are two openings in the clam and three if the foot's not there. Um, just kind of turn it, make sure the air should release in one big bubble, um, either in either the openings or in the where the um, foot should be. So clams do uh, use calcium and alkalinity from your aquarium when growing. Um, you'll see, especially with the draw since they're a little bit faster growers, they will take a toll on your alkalinity and calcium. So keep uh, measuring those parameters, make sure they're as constant as possible to keep up the health of your clam. They grow a lot faster when it's just consistent, especially with the, the pH and alkalinity. Um, so every clam uh, kind of has a different spot in the aquarium. Uh, Durasas like to keep in the sand bed. Uh, they do like that soft substrate they can kind of really burrow into a little bit. Um, and they do usually do well with less lighting, so that kind of works out nicely. Um, a lot of Maximus and Croceas like to be higher up usually within the rockwork because they like that harder substrate to attach onto with their basal threads. Um, Croceas will even, um, Croceas secrete a small acid in, around their basal opening so they can really burrow into the, a rock space. So if you want a Crocea, make sure that's, a, that's the, really the spot you want to keep it at because getting out of that spot is going to be really tough, <laughs> especially after it's burrowed deep into the rock. Um, Noe and Gigas. Gigas are kind of similar to uh, Durasa, where they don't need a lot of light just because they open up so large and there's a large clam in general. Um, so they can sit on the sand bed or on like a slower rock area. Um, Tridecna and Noe are going to be almost like a Maxima where they like the mid to high levels in the aquarium. They do like a lot of light definitely to keep that patterning and that coloration. There's no kind of like one way this clam is going to be happy all the time. So that's why I don't, I don't like putting a number on like a par or like a value because every clam is different and it'll acclimate to a lot of different settings. Um, but you'll notice like if a clam is gaping like that, if you do put uh, a lot of phytoplankton in, um, they'll start pumping. They'll pump it through that gaping mouth and they'll eat a lot of that. I'll show you that even, even later um, with the clams, I'll put a little bit of phytoplankton in. Um, and once it goes in there, they all start pumping. It's really cool to watch. Um, so this has been uh, Jake from Biodair Aquariums here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I hope you guys learned something today or have any questions you can always ask in the comments or ask me personally. Um, if you want to order some of our clams uh, in your store, uh, you can contact me at jake at biodaquariums.com or if you're a hobbyist that really wants to get a hand on uh, some of our stuff, just ask your local fish store and then they'll reach out to me and I'll try to get some stock for you guys.